You know, when I travel around the country photographing various places, I spot from time to time little details which will find their way into this new programme, Treasures of England. Take what is on the screen at the moment. That I found at All Hallows by the Tower Church. By the Tower, we are of course talking about the Tower of London. It's just across the road. And what I have on the screen, and I've checked of course in the guidebook, if I can find it actually, turning to the wrong, ah, there we are. It is in fact a carving, and it's tucked away in a corner. It's a carving by Grinding Gibbons. Uh, from Langwood, it says here, it was the gift of Mr. James Foyle. He paid £12 for the work. And it's little things like this, and some larger ones as well, which I want to show in this programme. Now, in the musical introduction, you had three doors, and they were at St. Giles Church in Cheadle, that's in Staffordshire, in case you don't know. And then after that came Rochester Cathedral, the west front door. And the third one was, uh, trying to think now where it was. Oh yes, I think I've got it, Beverly Minster. Yes, you see, I forgot, I forgot because Beverly Minster is a wonderful church of cathedral dimensions in East Yorkshire, yet it never, in a sense, got made to the top flight of uh, cathedrals. And really, there's no reason from an architectural point of view that you shouldn't visit it. So let, let's have a quick look now as a prelude to the programme, to these three places, St Giles, Cheadle, Rochester Cathedral, and yes, I remembered, Beverly Minster in East Yorkshire. St. Giles Cheadle is utterly amazing. It was designed by Pugin for the 16th Earl of Shrewsbury, who lived at nearby Alton Towers. It is very dark inside, but the full colour and splendour of St. Giles cannot be fully appreciated without the addition of artificial light, which can be purchased courtesy of a coin slot machine. Rochester's west front and nave are Norman, its arcades stretching to the pulpitum, upon which proudly sits the organ, creating a focal point. 
Kent has two cathedrals, but the photographer will find that Rochester has less visitors, therefore easier to manage than Canterbury. It lacks its cousin's size and grandeur, but don't let that stop you. Beverly Minster is the uncrowned monarch of churches. It is not a cathedral, but it ranks amongst them. It largely escaped the Reformation, losing only its chapter house, and once inside you are immediately confronted with its glorious architecture. The promise of its perpendicular west front continues with an interior of visual harmony. Lack of visitors, at least when I visited, makes photography easier. For further examples of church architecture, I move to stained glass. Don't forget to spot me to highlights, otherwise fine detail, particularly in faces, will burn up. Look carefully and you will see that I have not been entirely successful. It is amazing that a quiet Cotswold village can have a treasure unique in the UK. St Mary's Church, Fairford, has a complete set of medieval stained glass. The great west window has acquired worldwide fame. It depicts Christ in majesty, with images of heaven and hell, including the devil, together with his companions of monsters and demons. Great things sometimes come in small packages, and from the grandeur of St. Mary's we move to the modest church of All Saints Tudley, situated in a quiet Kent village near Tombridge. Here in stained glass is an expression of personal grief, commissioned from Marc Chagall, one of the great artists of the day. The windows are in memory of Sarah and her companion, who died at sea in a tragic sailing accident off the coast of Rye in September 1963. The east window portrays the misfortune, but what is immediately striking is the brilliance of blue light from the window projected into the chancel. Yellow is the dominant colour for the two south-facing windows, imparting a glow over the nave with the promise of eternal life. Chagall was in his eighties at the time of the commission, and although concern was expressed about the amount of physical work involved, his overall plan for the church was completed before his death on 28th of March 1985 in his 98th year. The only other example of Marc Chagall's work in stained glass known to me in the UK is in Chichester Cathedral. It portrays Psalm 150. The Baroque interior and windows at St Michael's Church, Great Whitley, were bought at the 1747 auction of the Duke of Chandos estate in Edgware, creating one of the finest ecclesiastical interiors in the country much of it imported. The portable viewing mirror provides essential assistance for photographers who do not wish to bend over backwards for that classic shot. Although attached to Whitley Court, it is a parish church. Whitley Court was one of the greatest houses in the country, but unfortunately it was gutted by a disastrous fire in 1937, and today it is just a shell. Managed by English heritage, the garden has been magnificently restored, and the Perseus and Andromeda fountain still performs on the hour. If you want a shot without people, even other photographers, try the last hour, which on my visit was at 5pm and my cousin, who took me there, obligingly stood to one side. Tin is no longer mined in Cornwall, but there are gaunt reminders of its industrial past, some in dramatic locations. At Batalloc, not far from Land's End, they extended under the sea, but only the engine houses remain. They can be visited if you are a good walker, for the paths in places are quite steep. 
you may be surprised about my edition of the Kasserig Stone Circle, just outside Keswick in the Lake District. It gets many visitors, especially when I take photographers there. But even when many visitors are around, taking just a few of the stones instead of the whole lot can work better. If you want the place to yourself, try early morning or dusk when the stones and what they represent take on an appropriate magic that is lacking at other times.